All right, folks, Mark here, Cooking Books. Just want to share some information. I've been studying all day. I'm just doing a lot of research. So I've been reading a lot about Marcus Aurelius over the last couple of weeks, couple of, yeah, about the last week and a half, two weeks. Marcus Aurelius was one of the uh, last emperors of Rome, a very, very prominent emperor of Rome. He was also a philosopher of his times, and uh, he was very big on Stoicism. He was actually one of the pillars of Stoics, the Stoical philosophy, which is just pretty much about self-regulation. And, uh, they, you know, his, it's called Marcus Aurelius, the Meditations, Med Marcus Aurelius Meditations. And it, it was where he journaled. Yeah, it's not really a book. It's what he did was he journaled his days and he would journal his thoughts at the end of the day. And then, you know, over the years, uh, historians have, has codified uh, and put it in volumes and made uh, what we call a book now. But it was actually his, a journal of his day to day. Uh, uh, affairs and the insights. So we, we, we're, you know, we're privileged to be able to tap into the resources of Marcus Aurelius, uh, an amazing mind. And uh, the reason why I'm talking about him now is because uh, in 180, he died in 180 AD. And uh, it is, it, it is arguable about how he died, but there's a consensus that he died of uh, smallpox and the, the smallpox was the result of an epidemic or pandemic that he faced in his time uh, as ruler of, of, of the Roman Empire, right? Uh, as emperor, as of, of emperor of the Roman Empire, right? And he he, he was, uh, yeah, so according to what I was reading, it said he was taken out by a uh, pandemic. Over, I think they said four, between four and five million people died. So this was of epic proportions. And it's timely. It's very timely. Right. I find it uh, very soothing because we're in our own pandemic, right? Our own epidemic pandemic is beyond the borders of the country. So, yeah, we're in our own pandemic right now. And uh, some of the things, some of the practices that I'm studying in the research, I'm like, OK, it's applicable, it's relevant. And again, it's timely. Uh, <clears throat> something that's 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 talked about in stoicism is being able to, to self-regulate. Right. Now, let's let me just dive into that real quick. self self Regulate, self-control, self-govern. And one of the techniques for self-governing is being able to stay present, to, 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 to maintain a, a, a total or an absolute presence of mind. Uh, how does this look? Let, let, me, let me give you a pictorial, right? Some pictures uh, so we can illustrate the principle and, and get a better grasp. Uh, you own your car. You have a car, Right. You look outside of your window and you can see your car in a driveway. You have the title, you have the keys, you have your insurance, registration. It's your vehicle. You own it. So you own your car. Okay. I'm going to erase the word car and I'm going to fill in the blank. Substitute car with thoughts. You own your thoughts. You own your car. But you are not your car. There's a distinction between you and your car, a line of demarcation, clear cut, no nuanced, no subtleties. It is transparent, complete, complete transparency. There's a space, there's a gap, a chasm. You are not your car. You, you own your automobile. You're not your automobile. Substitute that idea or that concept with your thoughts. You own your thoughts, but you're not your thoughts. You own your thoughts, but you are not your thoughts no different than you own your car but you are not your car i think you guys get where i'm going now uh, but why is this important it's extremely important because here's why if if there's no distinction between you and your thoughts this is where anxiety will run rampant in your life anxiety high blood pressure high stress levels and all manner of other uh psychological illnesses mental health so on and so forth right if you do not understand the uh, the arts of your thoughts and how thoughts work, right, then you will, thoughts will be like a weed in the garden of your mind. It will run rampant and it will uh, rummage through and through and totally uh, control your actions. Uh, everything that a person does, every act is a result of a thought seed. That is the result of a thought seed. I thought of scratching my nose. Thought of doing it again. Every single action is first preceded by a seed of thought or a thought of seed. Either way you say it, it's the same difference. 
So this is why it's so, you know, uh, every behavior, everything, whether it's murder or cooking dinner, right? Something uh, that's considered egregious to something that's considered joyful. It's all the result of a thought. So if you understand the distinction between who you are and what your thoughts are and who, you know, then you won't be impacted or influenced. Let's better, better we say that you won't be as easily influenced by the undesirable thoughts, right? No one's going to be, uh, argued about thoughts that influence you to cook food for your family, uh, to work and provide for your family, thoughts that inspire you to write books and movies and stories and music and compose. And no one's going to argue with that. But the thoughts that drive you to drink, the thoughts that drive you to do drugs, that drive you to kill, rob, steal, so, you know, cheat, adultery, all affairs, this, that, you know, fraud, financial ruin, those thoughts is why this concept is so important to really grasp and understand that you you are not your thoughts, uh, no different than you are not your car. You own your car, you own your car, and you own your thoughts, and neither of them are you. Uh, I can get in my car right now, I can look out the window, and I can see my environment, what's around me. It's important to learn to go inside of yourself. And when I say go inside of yourself, I mean uh, fall deep within you. Look outside of the windows of your eyes because you, you're not your eyes. You're not your nose. You're not your teeth, your mouth. You're nothing physical. The true you is completely immaterial. Uh, a substance that is uh, astral, right? It has no physical quality or physical nature. That is who you, the true person, are. Uh, and you're within... The, the, the vehicle of your body. Oh, this is some good stuff. Even as I'm saying it now, it's coming to me. The same way I can go in my car right now and sit down, right? I am inside of my car, but I'm not my car. Stay with me. It's still good. Um, it, the, the, keeping that illustration in mind, you personally right now who's watching this video, you could be sitting in your car right now. Uh, the car has its own body. It's called a chassis. And you are inside of the chassis. Okay. Your physical body right now is the chassis, it's the auto body, and you, the invisible stuff, is inside of your physical body, and you need your car to get around, to get to work, to drive, to, you know, to move around, uh, to, you know, transportation, the, to commute, okay, same exact thing, you need this physical body to move around, because we're in physical, three-dimensional physical reality, so you need, I need my arms, I need all my, my nose, I need everything physical to, to function on the physical plane that I exist in at this moment, right, obviously when we die, we move on, right, but so keeping that in mind that you're not your thoughts, right, and if you, if and like I said, the problem is when people do not understand how to disassociate, disidentify, uh, distance themselves from the thought and see the thought, watch the thought, don't discriminate, don't engage, don't argue with it, just watch it, just witness it. And then scientists call this the observer effect. When you witness and, and watch something, you change it, just your very presence. So you can, that's another a video. We don't want to go too far into that. But Marcus Aurelius, Stoicism, check this stuff out. He dealt with his own pandemic. Uh, we're now dealing with ours and being able, again, the, the, the point of this is with all the anxiety that's around us right now, whether it's the media, friends, family members, with all the anxiety, people getting sick, even uh, it's called psychosomatic, psychosomatic. I think that's what it's called, psychosomatic. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It's where you become sick, not be, uh, because of a physical illness, but because of a psychological uh, inculcation, right? Like you, you absorb so much of the media, of the news, that you, you you trick yourself, your body physically becomes sick. So, and that sickness doesn't mean you get, you know, some kind of real, like, actual symptoms of COVID-19, but you get sick in, in the terms of anxiety. Your blood pressure goes up, right? Your stress levels, cortisol levels, all that stuff goes up. These, these Your endocrine system gets thrown out of whack because of you believing uh, or constantly hearing the news and being uh, psychologically, uh, you're psychologically absorbing the news and you become psychologically ill as a result. It's called psychosomatic as a result of just the, the media, the anxiety that's in the air around you, uh, so on and so forth. So it, it, understanding this 
aspect of stoicism, self-regulating and how to self-regulate by distinguishing, disidentifying, disassociating yourself between you and the thought. When certain uh, thoughts of fear and anxiety arise in your mind, you'll be able to practice the, uh, the arts of the Stoics and see the thought, see it for what it is, objectively see it and identify and know that I am not that thought. And the power, what, what that does is the power of that thought subsides. It dissipates the influence the thought has on your physiology. Thoughts affect your central nervous system, your CNS. Your CNS is responsible for your body movement. So the, the influence of that thought, whether it's a thought of, you know, COVID-19, again, let's just keep it on that because that's what's prominent right now. It's preeminent in our society. Those fearful thoughts, those anxious thoughts, those uncertain thoughts, those worrisome thoughts, they immediately begin to lose their sway. They lose their pizzazz. They, they lose their je ne sais quoi, you know, what they lose, whatever it is that they you that, 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 that power has to, uh, affect your mental health, which ultimately transpires into your, uh, or transmit into your physical, uh, physiology, your, your physical body, again, blood pressure, high, you know, stress levels, et cetera, et cetera. And, and it drives you a drink, you know what I mean? Or whatever. So yeah, hopefully some of this information is useful to you till next time. Mark cooking the books. I'm about to get back to my research. Stay safe out there. Peace.